Hey guys, welcome back to History Revision Success. So today I'm going to go through the significance of Simon de Montfort for the AQA significance question. Um, so let's get to it. Now, I think Simon de Montfort is one of the easier options to receive as a question. Um, I think the only complicated factor with Simon de Montfort is that you have to establish whether they're asking about Simon de Montfort in general, whether they're asking about the role of Simon de Montfort in creating greater democracy or being a significant or influential figure, whether they're talking about the provisions of Oxford, the document that Simon de Montfort was heavily involved in, or if they're talking about the Second Barons War. So Simon de Montfort obviously played a very influential role in the provisions of Oxford and in the Second Barons War. Now, from all the questions I've ever seen of Simon de Montfort, it's about him as a figure. And that in mind, we can use all the following points. Now, the other thing to remember when Simon de Montfort comes up is to check what the question says, because in the past, they've asked the question, how significant was Simon de Montfort in creating greater democracy? Now, that's obviously a specific question they're asking, rather than just how significant was Simon de Montfort in total? Um, so be very, very um, certain to make sure you read the question properly is what I'm saying. So. I'm going to get into the points now. Um, I'll do exactly the same formula as I did in the Magna Carta video and that I explained in the how to answer this question video. I'll go through short term significant points and long term significant points. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you some really good key phrases that I would recommend you memorize and replicate as they include really high level vocabulary and they will make you sound grade nine in your writing. So starting with Overall, then, what we think of as a summary when we think of Simon de Montfort. Well, Simon de Montfort is arguably credited with the origins of Parliament. Now, that's up for debate, some debate there. But for GCSE um, kind of level, we can go along with the idea that he did create, you know, the very first or at least the foundations of the first Parliament. Um, he absolutely reformed government, in particular local government, and I'll get into that in a minute. And when he essentially deposed the king, um, was, you know, was this period of time significant? Now, we wouldn't call it necessarily a republic. It wasn't a commonwealth, like when Oliver Cromwell um, led the country. But the king and his son, Edward, were both locked away in prison. And Simon de Montfort was essentially de facto ru ruler of, of England. Now he ruled with the council. Again, we'll use that as a point in a minute. But is this some form of you know, significant time period in English history where for the first time, we didn't have really a king in control? So short term, now Simon de Montfort absolutely played a key role in developing democracy. We can talk about, as an example of this, the provisions of Oxford. So the provisions of Oxford limited the king's power again, and it gave more power to the ordinary man, and in particular, the barons. Now, we would use the fact that there was a great council of 15 barons to monitor the king as evidence of that. So he was not allowed to solely make decisions. He had to make decisions um, alongside this great council. Now, I think what's interesting to note is that the provisions of Oxford had 15 barons on the council, whereas the Magna Carta stated that there were 25 barons on the council to monitor the king. So that's very, very interesting because we're seeing a reduction in the number of people who are able to have a voice. So essentially what's happened under provisions of Oxford is a narrowing of the political voice However, as we'll see, Simon de Montfort does extend um, the, the ability to have a voice in society in other ways later on in terms of the invitation of commoners to parliament. So um, that's an interesting little point you can play with a little bit if you want to um, in, in the writing. But first point then, role in developing democracy. Second role, he expands democracy. Um, commoners are invited to Parliament, the 1265 January Parliament, and it's absolutely radical reform, essentially, that we have these commoners present. Um, we have 23 lay magnates and citizens from every single town are invited to Parliament. Now, if you remember, the reason that Simon de Montfort does this 
is because he's losing his grip on the great council. He is, um, people are starting to view him as a bit of a tyrant or a despot who has taken power essentially from Henry and who is starting to, well, he's absolutely favoring his friends and family. Um, they are heavily, the great council is heavily filled with friends and family and a word you might need to describe that is nepotism, choosing people for positions based on your friendship or your familial link. Um, and as he loses kind of favor with the barons, he seeks favor with the lower classes in society. And he does invite knights and burgesses lay magnates and citizens to parliament. Now this has a lasting legacy and we have to say this is hugely significant both in the short term and the long term. I'll get to the long term later but for this point in the short term that obviously is a huge and radical change in terms of ordinary life and the spread of democracy in society that is shifting that kind of great chain of being that feudal system that's always been there. We're starting to see the beginning of that moving slightly. Um, so it's very, very interesting. And it, we would definitely say this is significant. Now, finally, I've put that point into the this, this third point here, that it was seminal. So it was groundbreaking. It was a turning point in the progression of rights for the lower classes. And particularly with this point, we would look at the fact that local sheriffs are given the power to tax and for the first time, there is investigation into the abuse of powers by local landlords. So lords, barons, nobility are being investigated for abusing the rights of the commoners, the peasants that live on their land. So this is absolutely seminal. You know, I think that's a great word to use. It's seminal, it's groundbreaking in the progress of these rights for the lower classes. So there's my summary of the short term. Now in the long term, so we would credit Simon de Montfort um, as having a legacy that led to the creation of parliament. Edward I, Henry's son, creates the first, what we might call the first parliament. He calls it model parliament. And in that parliament, he retains the fact that there are invited elected members in, in, in sitting, there are elected members at this parliament. And then as we know, that never goes away. Um, the idea of kind of, you know, the House of Commons and the elected person, the elected body really, really develops under the Tudors, most notably Elizabeth I. But from Edward onwards, we now never lose that um, element of our parliament, that element of our society's democracy. And that came from Simon de Montfort, um, so therefore he's highly significant. People also credit Simon de Montfort for being a um, precursor to the House of Commons. He's also very symbolic as a figure. Um, he is represented in a statue in the US House of Representatives. He's known as the father of the House of Commons. Therefore, in our kind of living memory and our historical memory, our political history, we remember and we credit him for the creation of these parliaments, for the creation of that extension of democracy, and he is therefore significant. So there is my summary of long term and short term. Now, there's not as much to say, I think, with this with this question, with this point, but that works in your favour because you've got three points and two points. They're both very, very, they're all very, very clear. You put in that specific evidence and the phrases I'm about to give you, you will do full marks really, really well. So. Some key phrases. Now, what I've done here is I have essentially put those points. Well, I'm going to give you three, but I've put those points into sentences, into phrases with some very high level elevated vocabulary, which really shows off that you deserve that seven, that eight out of eight. So the first one, under his leadership, the first English constitution was written, a seminal document that formed a foundation of democracy for years to come. Okay, fantastic vocabulary, include that point. Second, overall, as a symbolic figure, he has come to represent far more than he achieved in his lifetime. Now, this is because many people actually criticize, particularly in the historiography, we criticize Simon de Montfort um, in his role as a leader. I think it's 
fair to say he is essentially a a bit of a irony because he actually went on to represent so much in terms of democracy and in spreading and widening the democratic voice but as a leader he was very narrow and um almost despotic in his actions he was ne he was a nep do i say nepotist he definitely used nepotism um he favored his friends he kept the power narrow and he absolutely took power for himself so in that sense we might say he's a bit of an irony or an ironic figure um in the in the history of democracy and then this is the way that I phrase that final point there. Um, his rule was a paradox as he whilst he invited commoners to parliament for the first time and therefore increased democracy. Upon taking power, he quickly became despotic in his rule. So these are three ways that I would frame my um, points, the points I listed beforehand in the table. I would use these sentences to open the points and then you can go on to give the evidence. So that's Simon de Montford. Up next, I will do Pilgrimage of Grace. Um, please like the video, please subscribe, please comment if you find these helpful. And I look forward to filming the next one for you soon.